also uh, need our permission to be able to come in here and assist us on an individual project that doesn't give them carte blanche to go in there and just start messing with our planet. Uh, and people with other dimensional frequencies, they're perfectly happy to come in here and assist us when we're working on individuals that have health problems. But uh, they do need permission from us. And also, if we're working on an individual, we do need to ask that individual if it's okay, if someone from another density frequency can work with them, such as Dr. Zeigel. So uh, if they give permission for Dr. Zeigel, I tell them, that if you feel Dr. Zeigel working on you, don't freak out because he's just doing his work and they understand that and they say they're willing to do that. And the best example I can give of uh, interaction with Dr. Zeigel was when I was out hiking, I took a terrible fall and I wrenched my right shoulder so bad that I lost the use of my hand. And I was out in the wilderness uh, by a creek. I did have a campsite set up and I was very concerned about it because uh, with just one hand there are some things you can't do. As an example, open a can of peas with a can opener. Other simple things is just starting the car because of the position of the ski. Other things is uh, how do you put soap on a washcloth so you can bathe? How do you brush your teeth when you need to put the toothpaste on your toothbrush? How do you unzip your fly? How do you do any cooking of any kind with one hand? So I was very concerned about it and uh, I was able to break up some wood and I had a campfire and I was sitting in a chair and uh, Dr. Zeigel flew over and I s told him, I said, I'm very glad to see you and thank you for coming because I, my arm was incapacitated. I told him what the experience was and I asked him if he was able to help me and he said that he would. Before Dr. Zeigel came over, I was trying to find out how I would get out of this predicament and the only thing I could think of was in the morning I would open my car and get in from the passenger side and then start the car, then walk around and get in the driver's seat. And then using my left hand, I could put it in gear and I could drive into town and get help. So Dr. Zeigel said that he would help me. And uh, I went to bed, I was in a tent and I had a sleeping bag and it took everything that I could to get inside of the sleeping bag. It's very hard to do when you've only got one arm. And I went to sleep and I woke up about two o'clock in the morning just absolutely drenched with sweat. And I had to go to the bathroom really bad and I reached up and I unzipped the tent and I got out of my sleeping bag and I stepped outside and then I realized that I had used my right hand to unzip the tent with. And the strength had come back into my right hand. And I thanked Dr. Zeigel profusely. I had full use of my right hand. And that's one of the things that they told me. They said, always be thankful, always have gratitude. On a hot summer day, if you can get a nice glass of cold water, be thankful for that. They also told me responsibility. Responsibility is very important for our own self. And they said that probably 98% of the people in this country have absolutely no responsibility for themselves. And they tried to shift the responsibility onto government or the church or various organizations. They said it's very important that we have responsibility for our being and exercise it. And they also told me that one of the things we need to be aware of is forgiveness and not to harbor those kind of feelings against another person. And they said, forgiveness isn't complete unless you uh, forgive without any conditions. You don't set any conditions such as, I will forgive you if, putting an if there. So.
They said that one person does make a difference. Examples such as Mahatma Gandhi or Mother Teresa, these are just one person's. So any time that we come down on ourselves and we feel that we don't count or we don't make any difference, uh, remember that, that one person does make a difference. And uh, very often you'll find that collectively I think that we can do more by uh, taking our energies and putting them together. And they also said that uh, things are shifting very rapidly and people of different natures seem to be migrating together. And they said that uh, various things would start play, taking place on this planet and uh, that we need to deal with them and that we need to take responsibility. And there is no such a thing as an ascension. There is no such a thing as a UFO coming down and evacuating people uh, or anything of that nature. There's no such a thing as a rapture. They said that we have to be responsible for our planet. And if anything goes awry on our planet, that we need to take care of these events that take place and uh, we do need to assist other people as we're going through this planet and we'll find that many people have some very wonderful programs for assisting people and needing people and we find that uh, some of the disasters that has taken place on this planet in the last few years have been very severe and we find out that people have banded together and help people and one example was uh, Three years ago, I believe it was three or four years ago, up in uh, Montana, they had a very severe storm up there, winter storm, and uh, they received no help from the federal government, such as FEMA or anything like that. It was people helping people. If somebody was stuck in the ditch, they'd go pull them out. If somebody needed food, they'd go get food for them. And I think we need to take a lesson for this and be willing to participate in revitalization of an area that a catastrophe has taken place and also we also need to bless mother earth we need to bless the natural things and we need to honor them and we need to appreciate all these wonderful things uh, and the birds we need to look at the birds we need to look at the plants and the animals on this planet and the birds are always in continual uh, communication with us and if you go outside look around watch the birds and see what they have to tell you watch the animals and see what they have to tell you and honor them honor the insects honor the ants and watch the ants because the ants can communicate with you um, many times as far as weather goes and they said that uh, when the transition takes place we'll all transcend together okay. okay what they said is the transition that is taking place and collectively that we will make the transition it doesn't mean that something out of the sky is going to come and take and lift us off that isn't going to happen the transition is in our consciousness and the consciousness of course of the planet as we uh, become aware that the planet does have consciousness and are able to honor the planet and honor the natural things that are on this planet, we will find a greater degree of security and also we uh, will have the information available to us as we need it and uh, always uh, don't limit ourselves as to the source of the information. Whatever information is out there that we need we can ask for information and it's going to be supplied to us <laughs> thank you for having me